So recently in the reptile community, the reptile circle, monitor lizards have been growing astronomically in popularity as pets. Now there's a lot of species that make very, very great pets, but today I wanna to give you guys kind of an inside look at what it's really like keeping monitors for those of you who don't know. So I keep three species of monitors myself, Varanus panoptes horni, which is the Argus monitor, Varanus pilbarensis, the Pilbara rock monitor, and Varanus mecrei, which is the blue tree monitor. So even though they do have their own attributes and different qualities, you know, from species to species, there are some things that are constant throughout all of monitor keeping, and I wanted to give you guys an inside look into that today. So the first thing that a lot of people are drawn to with monitors is their smarts and their interaction. Now, monitors are famously known to be some of the smartest reptiles on the planet. They're definitely the smartest lizards on the planet, even more so than tegus in my experience, but some of the smartest reptiles in general. And let me tell you guys, this is 100% true. Now, they are just so interactive and inquisitive when you have a social animal. Even the shy ones are super, super observant. But if you have a nice social monitor, like you guys are seeing blue, my Argus monitor right here on the screen, super social. They want to come check you out. They always want to know what's going on. They want to dig around and always be exploring. They're also just extremely inquisitive and curious creatures. Now, because I do believe that their brain functions at kind of a more advanced level as opposed to other, you know, smaller reptiles, I think they're more on level, you know, intelligence wise with like birds and whatnot. They're always thinking and they always want to be, you know, in tune with their environment and they want to know what's going on. Like I said, if you have a social monitor, they will usually come right up to you. They'll investigate you. They'll use their tongue, use that Jacobson's organ, you know, take sense in with their tongue. That's how they kind of read their environment and they like to just see what's going on. They will watch every single move that you make. You guys, you, you'll start on one side of the room and you move to the other side and you will see their eyes just, just track you. It's the most amazing thing. It really is like you're watching a dinosaur from Jurassic Park. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's one thing to see it on camera and it's one thing for me to, you know, to talk about it. But when you actually are in a room with a monitor that's comfortable in its enclosure and even one that's just kind of curious and peeking out of a hiding area, you can see their eyes track you. You can see their pupils dilate. The intelligence that these animals have and the interaction they give you is seriously second to no reptile I've ever kept. And I've kept a fair few species. The second thing you need to know is that you need a secure enclosure. Now I saw something on Facebook the other day and it said monitors or reptiles are not escape artists. Your enclosure is just not secure. And that is the most true thing ever. Yes, they may be more prone to escaping an enclosure that's not secure, maybe a little bit more than, you know, a leopard gecko or something. No shame on leopard geckos. I love leopard geckos, but you know, they're not monitors. If your enclosure is not secure, you will you will have an escapee. My Pilbara rock monitors have escaped many times before I really locked down and secured their enclosure. My Argus monitor has escaped from, you know, when I used to keep them in grow tents, if you're an OG of the channel, they will find and they will pick at and dig at every little crevice, every little slit, every little opening that you have in your enclosure. It doesn't matter if it's just a tiny little little you know crack in a, in a piece of wood they will investigate it they will get their hands in there they'll try and rip it open and see if there's food or if there's something new to explore they're just super curious animals and while this does make them super fun to have it also makes it so that you really need an enclosure or you're not going to have a monitor inside now grow tents aren't great for really anything you know over three foot but you need to be super careful with them regardless monitors can actually get their claws i've seen this with blue He's taken his claw, put it in the zipper, and was able to literally unzip the zipper. It was literally like Jurassic Park, and he was able to walk out. Thankfully, I was there watching him, so I was able to kind of secure it a little bit more, but once he hit about three feet, it was time to move him out of that grow tent because they're just not, in my opinion, not really suitable for for large, large monitors, unless they're heavily modified, which is just a whole nother topic. This isn't a grow tent video. You need a very secure enclosure because a lot of them can get very big, they're very curious, and they love to investigate ways to get out and explore. Really quick, if you guys are enjoying this video, go down below, hit that subscribe button, ding that notification bell, please. Small way to support the channel. Leave a comment for you monitor keepers. What would you guys tell non-monitor keepers? What's one piece of advice you guys would give to someone who's looking into monitors, but they're not quite sure what to expect comment down below what you guys would tell them we're trying to get to 3800 subscribers by the end of the month boys are saying we can't do it man streets again they're saying the will exotic fam is weak we gotta prove them wrong hit that subscribe button man join the family so this third one is kind of something you would expect and it's that yes they do eat a lot of food but they don't eat as much as you would think and let me let me let me elaborate on that okay 99 percent of the monitors you are going to see on the internet or in captivity are fat 
they're overweight, they have a ton of extra fat on them, and they're just not the condition that monitors should be. Now, ideal monitor body composition, if you look at them in the wild, you will see slender and athletic built animals. Now, of course, this is going to vary between species. Now, you are not going to see like a black throat or a Komodo dragon that's built like a tree monitor. No, but for the most part, they should be athletically built. Their stomachs should not be hanging on the floor when they walk. They should have a nice lateral fold on their body when they have not eaten a meal. And they should be alert. If you're feeding your monitor and it's not really running over to the food, then you're most likely feeding it too much. Now, of course, if a monitor is shy, it's not going to run right up to the food. But for the most part, if you have a monitor that's somewhat social and it's not running over to get the food, you probably have a monitor that you don't need to feed as much as you do. Now, ideally, you want a varied diet. You don't want to just feed the same thing. Now, I understand some monitors can be picky and they can like hyper fixate on on one food item. A monitor eating one food item is better than them not eating at all. But of course, we want to work at diversifying their diet because in the wild, they're not going to be eating the same things. So things like insects, chicks, quail chicks, eggs are going to be your main staple food items. But you can also incorporate things like whole fish, shellfish, shrimp. Whole prey is the way to go. You don't want to feed too many. Like I, I talk about this a lot, so I'm not going to go into it. You don't want to feed like chicken breasts or like pieces of steak because that doesn't have all like you know the bones the organs the blood the connective tissue all that stuff is super important for digestion gut health vitamins all that good stuff but feeding monitors can get a little bit expensive i'll make you guys a trade how about this if you guys want behind the scenes content if you want discounts on merch like this fire shirt you can get a discount on this if you want discounts on monitor lizards or reptiles that i produce baby animals um, first access to different things, a more direct line of contact to me. I will give you guys all that. If you go down to the first link in the description and join the Patreon, huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. I really, really appreciate you guys. If you want more details, first link down in the description. I think there's a pretty even trade off. Now, the last thing I think that you should really expect or you should think of beforehand, before you even get the lizard, is a monitor right for you? And if so, what species is right for you? Now, they come in all different shapes and sizes. You can get monitors that are 10 inches long, or you can get monitors that are 10 feet long. The choice is really up to you, but it does come down to a couple different things that you should consider before you actually decide to go out and cop that lizard. How much time do you have on your hands to socialize the animal? What kind of space are you working with? What kind of budget are you working with? And how much experience do you have? Now, I'm not one of those guys that's going to say, okay, before you get a monitor, you need a bearded dragon. No. If you want a species and you don't want to work with any other species, you should get that species you want. But there is a caveat, you should work with that species first if it's something that's a little bit more cantankerous or potentially dangerous. Monitors, even though they're incredible creatures, can potentially be dangerous, that has to be said. So if you do want something like a croc monitor and that's all you want, you've never kept it before, I would highly recommend doing your research but talking to different keepers and finding someone with adult and baby croc monitors that you can go and you can work with them and get a feel for the species before you you actually decide to bring one into your home since you don't have any prior experience because if you don't know exactly what you're doing with an animal of that caliber things may not end up very pretty so it's always better to be prepared no matter if you're bringing home a water monitor a croc monitor an aki monitor whatever the case may be do your research and know what you're getting into beforehand before you buy the lizard at a show or you see something online so there it is guys that's what it's really like keeping monitors again i want you guys to comment below if you had a piece of advice for someone who's never kept a monitor in their life but maybe they're kind of looking into varanids what would you tell them like what kind of, what piece of advice would you give them drop it down below i'm really trying to see what you guys have to say i love your guys's opinions i love the the conversations down in the comments man that's the best thing ever make sure you guys are subscribed and hit that bell notification so you never miss when we do another upload remember trying to prove the boys wrong and get the 3800 subscribers by the end of the month but make sure you guys give this video a like just that simple gesture helps out tremendously and again if you guys are interested in extra content discounts on merch and new animals that i produce as well as behind the scenes first access at all the cool stuff we got going on because guys it's going to start warming up outside soon and let me just tell you the things that i have planned the things that we have planned you are not going to want to miss a single one of them because it's going to be a whole year of bangers man 2024 we are going up i appreciate you guys for watching i will catch y'all in the next video